ever play the game Big Bank Take Little Bank? Well, I never really was into it because I didn't really have the money like that. And if I even did have a little extra money, I wouldn't want to risk it playing something like that. But I'm feeling a little confident today because I have this $5 bill. Now, if I decided that I wanted to play Big Bank Take Little Bank against the Baltimore Ravens with this $5 bill... I think I could actually win. Reason being because the Ravens are a little strapped for cash right now. But before we get into that team, keep it clean. I gotta say I love y'all. Special shout out uh, to my guy, David Beach. Uh, reason being because as you all know, as you all saw this past Wednesday, the Ravens training camp passes, they became available and it came and went in a matter of like four minutes. It was super fast. So anybody that was fortunate enough to get a pass to Ravens training camp this year, congratulations to you. Um, but my guy, David, he was able to get some, um, but he found out that he unfortunately won't be able to attend. Uh, so he did hit me up uh, and ask if I knew anybody that needed some. And I said, yeah, one of my guys was actually looking to take his family there. Uh, so I gave him his contact information and he was able to transfer the tickets uh, to my boy. So shout out to you, David. I really appreciate it. He really appreciates it. Uh, and we really appreciate you here on Team Keep It Clean. So thank you for that. Now, the Ravens. Oof. You know what, let's just read the report verbatim straight from Brian McFarlane, who is Raven Salary Cap on Twitter. Please make sure you follow him, please, because all things Raven Salary Cap, I don't know how he gets it. I don't know, but I ain't asking no questions because he's obviously on point. He's been on point for years. He's trustworthy, factual, all that good stuff, reliable. Yeah, he, he's A1. Anyway. Um, Brian McFarlane on Twitter, he put, because you remember Justin Houston, the Ravens originally put the tender on him, that unrestricted free agent tender. Um, and he would either be, he had three options. If he didn't want to play for the Ravens then he wouldn't be able to play at all. So he had to retire. Uh, but if he did want to play for the Ravens, he could either, um, has signed the tender or like, it's some crazy deadline. Anyway, um, they were like, you know what? Scrap the tender. We're just going to sign you back on a one-year deal. Um, they made the deal official. They announced it and all that. But we just hadn't heard about the cap numbers for that deal. Um, so he's given us the cap numbers. He said Justin Houston's one-year deal includes a 3.5 mil cap hit for 2022. I was like, whoa. 3.5 mil? Woo. Okay. They, like, they really love this from Justin Houston. Boy, I, I ain't mad at it. But woo. I didn't think his cap hit was going to be that high. I didn't. I, he, again, he's not a bad player. So I don't want anybody to think that he's not a bad player. I just, I was just a little surprised. But anyway, Justin Houston's one-year deal includes a 3.5 mil cap hit for 2022. He has a base salary of 1.12 mil. So that's, that's, that's low. But then the signing bonus is 2.38 mil uh, or some combination of a signing bonus and a roster bonus that equates to 2.38 mil. So that's cool. All right. We got that out the way. But here's the kicker. Here's where it gets fun. The Ravens now have only $672,240 in cap space. <laughs> Let me run that back. Not six mil, but six hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred forty dollars in cap space. So, yeah, Ravens, money's a little thin, but uh, no, 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 y'all know we ain't giving nobody no excuses now. Y'all know, but anyway, he said uh, restructures will be needed to sign remaining draft picks. So, um, yeah, something Ravens are at a point right now where something has got to give and um i would suggest that you stay on the lookout um for somebody to get restructured or extended and i'm not even talking about lamar jackson I'm not talking about lamar jackson lamar jackson would obviously open up probably he'd probably be the one that would open up the most cap room if he was to get a contract extension um but i ain't even talking about him because uh, I don't even think it will be him right now. But, hey, who knows? Uh, but something's going to happen uh, to, because Ravens, they have to open up some money. They have, they have no choice but to. So, because, again, he, he mentioned how they, they still got uh, some draft picks that I think is three left. 
that got assigned, I think it's three. Maybe it's two. It's like two or three, one or two. But either way, um, they got some draft picks that need to be signed. And, of course, they're still going to want to have some little extra money, some little pocket money and whatnot uh, to go into the season with as, as just-in-case money, as rainy day money, as stay ready so you ain't got to get ready money. Um, so stay on the lookout for something to happen literally any day now. Um, if I had to base it on anything, I would think that it would happen before training camp. Training camp is only what, like two weeks away, something like that. It's only like two weeks and change away. Maybe I forgot how long it is away, but I know it's super close. Um, but yeah, Ravens have to do something now. What I was mentioning earlier, I, I know some people, they, they see that cap number and they're like, oh, man, well, man, we, we're not going to be able to get anybody now. That's not true. That's definitely not true. Remember, I, if I take you back, I, I'll never forget because I, I remember thinking like, oh, man, somebody trolling. They trolling. They faking. They lying. This not true. Oh, that ain't real. I remember a couple years back. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs had one hundred seventy seven dollars, not one hundred seventy seven thousand. They had one hundred seventy seven dollars. In cap space, one hundred seventy seven dollars. They gave an extension to I think Chris Jones, Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey. Was that the year that Patrick Mahomes got extended to? I don't even remember. But my point is they were still able to get it done. They, they gave the extensions. Those extensions opened up the money. And you know the rest of the story. So on and so forth. And I, I don't even have to remind you about what the New Orleans Saints be doing over there. Because they flip and finagle this thing every single year. And then, of course, the Rams. Oh, please, don't even talk to me about no running. Actually, do, do talk to me about the Rams. Because that's a conversation that I love having. Um, but my point is, and this ain't even to get into the, the, the whole debate where people make it extreme. Oh, you just want to be like the Rams? You just want to do things like the Rams do? Is that the only way that works? No. Um, but what I'm saying is that the Ravens, yeah, that, that, when you see that number initially that, oh man, 672,000 in cap space, ooh, yikes. Yeah, it, it can't initially look like a ooh, yikes, but it's the NFL. So they, they could, they could work this thing and they will work it out, um, to where, where they'll be able to obviously sign their draft picks and they'll still be able to have some more money to do some other stuff, too. It's just a matter of how are they going to get it done? Are they going to approach Ronnie Stanley? Are they going to approach Marlon Humphrey? Are they going to approach Mark Andrews? I think he would probably uh, be a candidate uh, because he's in the second year of his new deal. Um, and it's usually the newer deals that get approached first. Could they be like Marcus Williams? <laughs> hey, man, we need to do a little flip, a little maneuvering with your contract. I don't think it'll be him yet, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But um, my point is it will be somebody. Now, uh, one name that has been just floating around like crazy, uh, not recently, though. It had been before when it came to the Ravens possibly opening up some cap space uh, when it came to it possibly extending his contract was Marcus Peters. And then uh, everything just went silent on him. And with Marcus Peters, uh, I, I think it's a very tricky situation and it's almost a little bit like worrisome for the future. Not not right here, right now, but possibly like next year because he's on a one year deal. Um, and I think his, uh, what is his contract? Like 10, no, he could open his contract is either worth 10 mil. Or he could open up like 10 mil if they did an extension, something like that. Um, but either way, he's on a one year deal right now. He's in the last year of his deal. Um, and we haven't seen him. So I know there had been a lot of talk and a lot of people thinking and speculating like, oh, Marcus Peters, he could be somebody where the Ravens, they could extend him. And they obviously still could. But I think that the Ravens are more in a uh, wait and see 
mode with Marcus Peters to see exactly where he is, exactly how he's looking on the field. Um, and then they'll go based off of that. I don't think that they will give him a contract extension before they actually see him. Um, I don't think they're going to go back to that whole uh, that Joe Flacco year when he was. Uh, we remember uh, after the Super Bowl, um, he signed the six year, hundred twenty million dollar deal. Um, but it was really a three year deal. It was a deal that it was six years, but we all knew that in three years they were going to come back and rework the whole thing. Um, so three years had passed and it was time for them to rework the whole thing. But the only problem was that the previous year, Joe Flacco had tore his, was it his Achilles or his ACL? I forget which one it was. That, that was, I think, was it Aaron Donald that did that? Is that the game that, um, Aaron Donald broke Justin Forsett's arm? Oof, boy, picked him up. Bam! Justin Forsett, oh, out for the season. And then this, that same game, Joe Flacco uh, tore his ACL or Achilles, whichever one it was. But anyway, um, it was the following year after Joe suffered that season-ending injury that the Ravens, they reworked the deal. And very briefly, he became the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL yet again. Um, but they gave him that money without being like, all right, well, Flacco, we know exactly how good you are from being removed from that uh, from your surgery and whatnot and from your injury, even though, I mean, I guess they, they didn't really have no other options at quarterback, though. Uh, and I guess they were, felt like they were, like, locked in anyway. Um, so, and it worked out in the long run because in the long run we end up getting Lamar Jackson afterwards, too. So, yeah, yeah, it all worked out. But anyway, uh, with Marcus Peters, I just, I think they'll wait. I, I don't think that they'll do the same thing with him that they did uh, with Joe Flacco. Um, and really that just reminds me of, of, of a couple of guys, uh, but those guys aren't in contract situations. Um, and the guys that who are coming back from injury, serious injury, who we're just waiting on. Um, but that's a whole nother story and a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But anyway, y'all, I, I, uh, I'm ready. Ravens, if y'all want to play big bank, take little bank, I'm with it.